Once again, it's time for another Burton U.S. Open. In 2019, the women dominated the course with Miyabi Onitsuka taking third. Julia Marino secured her second place position with tricks like the Cab Double Cork 900. And Zoe Sadowski Sanat, at just the age of 18, attacked the upper rail section, showed us her style, and walked away with the win. The playing field is level once again, presenting opportunities for defending champions, seasoned vets, and new up-and-comers alike. Welcome to the Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. The double tripler, Vicky Dawson, making history. Oh my goodness! And welcome, welcome to Bell, Colorado. A beautiful day for the first day of competition here at the Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. Tina Dixon here, along with Olympian Louis Vito competitor you've been on the podium here at this event but look at this weather mother nature is shining upon us today you had a chance to talk to some of the athletes what are they saying about the course you know throughout the season you always hear oh it was really hard to get speed it was really hard to get speed but here they say we have plenty of speed it is fast and with the cold temperatures we've had this morning the course will be running extra fast which is great for the riders because they can scrub speed rather than having to point it and worry about gaining speed yeah and also we've got those blue skies you can see on your screen right there uh, visibility is not going to be an issue temperatures are a little chilly this morning they are expected to warm up you can see that right there 27 degrees uh, light winds uh, but conditions sunny in that packed powder and like Louis Vito said uh, the course is going to be fast and the athletes they're gonna have their work cut out for them as well Louis because this is a different course. I wrote up the lift yesterday. I took, the, I took a look at some of the features. Um, it's a little bit different than what we're typically used to seeing for slope style. You know, that's what I love about the U.S. Open. They've been around. There's one of the most historic events, but they push the riding. You know, they have such a unique setup. We see a lot of transition in the slope style course, which, like you said, is very different, but it allows the riders to be creative and use different spaces and it's going to be an exciting contest because it's pushing the riders and we have the best riders in the world here. Yeah, well, let's take a closer look at this course and we can see exactly what Louis has been talking about. Uh, Louis, take us through this course. So as you can see, our nice display right here, we have the rail section up top. So riders will start off on the rails, which is a big differentiator for, the, you know, to separate yourself from the riders. We have the flat tube gap to the down rail right there but we have multiple options another flat tube gap over the stairs or just the traditional down rail but 26 feet long then you come into the next rail features it's called the kink tube pops off then you have the gap to the down tube and the flat down rail again 36 feet long or the red bull wall ride and then we start getting into the jumps and this is the transition i call this a shark fin it's kind of a quarter pipe to a jump landing still 50 feet in distance and then now we have back-to-back -back transition features and this is what we haven't seen in any slope style competition and then there's the flat bar or the cannon box either one is how you can end right there and then the traditional big booter at the end you show it this is the last impression you leave on the judges a unique course a fun course it's going to be great well, here's a look at the format. Uh, we start with 16 riders. It's a semi-final. We are going to cut it down to six riders that will be competing in the final that will take place on Friday. Take a look at the judging system. Uh, I love this judging system. Overall points out of 100. Now 60% will be on those individual tricks, and each feature is based out of 10. And then there's that overall impression score, which is 40%. Uh, I like this because the rails have just as much importance as the jumps. Those transition features are going to be really tricky for the riders, and they're going to have a lot of importance too. You know, that overall impression is key too because it's how you flow through the course. Are you smooth? You got to slide the entire rail. Then you got to hit these transition features and connect everything together to create this beautiful body of work, and that's what the judges are also looking for. Yeah, it's a slope style. You got to put all the puzzle pieces together. Well, let's take a look at the list of riders that we have here today. We are going to kick things off with Anna Gasser. What a way to kick things off. Uh, look at this list, Louie. I see Miyabi Onitsuka out there, Leila Iwabuchi, Eni Ruka Yarvi. 
the defending champion, Zoe sadowski Sanat is back. She has not had a lot of good results yet this year, uh, so looking to defend her win from last year. Now, we started with 16. We are now down to but we also have Jamie Anderson coming up and then Lori Blue and to round it out. Uh, who's your That's a really tough one. You know, Jamie Anderson, I feel like, is a very safe bet. She's the veteran. She's won pretty much every event you can think of, and she's so consistent. But Zoe's been riding this course really well, and you have a lot of riders who may not have the results that they wanted this year, and this is a great place to end the season and end it with a bang. Absolutely. Well, again, Mother Nature, take a look at this weather. Blue skies out here. Uh, the first day of competition here at the Burton U.S. Open of snowboarding. It's Wednesday. It's going to start today. Then we have Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So the crowds are just uh, starting to fill in. Uh, the semifinals, though, almost more nerve-wracking than the finals. Would you say that's true? 100%. Because even though we have 13 riders, and we're making a cut about halfway, you have the best riders in the world. So you need to throw down a very difficult run, but also save something for the finals. So that's what's so stressful is, okay, I gotta do a good run, but I can't do my best run. So you're not throwing everything, and then if you fall on something easier, then you're getting frustrated. And it's only two runs. It's a best of two runs, which makes it stressful. Yeah, only two runs. Well, let's take a look back at what happened in 2019 and the podium uh, of what that looked like as well. Starting with Miyabi Onitsuka. She finished up on the podium in that third spot. Uh, Miyabi is known for her big air, her big air tricks. Um, but last year she really proved, hey, I can do rails as well. You know, Miyabi is one of those riders where she took this result from last season and carried it into this season. She's been having a great year, been riding very solid, and her jumping just keeps getting better, but has technical rail tricks like that right there. Again, different course. That's the one thing I love about slope style is every course is different, and with the US Open, they really mix it up. You see the traditional jumps, more traditional jumps last year than this year, but here's the transition feature, which we have two of coming into this, this event. You know, I think you see a lot of slow star riders, you know, they, they are used to hitting traditional jumps, but you throw in these tradition or these transitional features, which is a very half pipe-esque. And you, so you see some of these slow star riders coming into the half pipe just to get some practice on riding transition. And Julia Marino dropping in right here. You know, making that transfer. We have a couple transfers in this course. Julia Marino, so solid. Tail slide 270 out. You know, I love watching her ride because she's somebody that, when she goes up to train, she goes up there for a purpose and really pushes women snowboarding. There's that cap, double cork 900, which has really led the charge in the double cork phase in, in women's snowboarding. There's the crippler off the transition feature. And then coming into this last jump, with a backside fa 720. You know, Julia, unfortunately, not competing here today, which opens the door up to make that final spot. And then we'll go into last year's winner. And also, one of my picks to be someone to watch not only in semifinals, but finals. Zoe Sadowski Sanat coming from New Zealand, and she is competing here today. And, you know, the one thing I really enjoy is New Zealand's stepped up their support system. They have some of the best coaches in the world. Mitchell Brown, who I competed with in a half pipe, has really taken a serious role in being a coach. And they've been doing great things over there, and they have some great riding and training. A great place to go in the fall, in the spring springtime for New Zealand. They have a great camp out there, and you can see it really showing in their riders, both male and female. Yeah, uh, Zoe really sent a message last year when she came out and won this event at the age of just such a young age coming into this. And what I love about Zoe is her switch trick. She has that switch backside 900 that she can perform. You know, she really surprised everyone in 2018 when she finished up on the podium in that third place spot at the Olympics. There's one of her big switch tricks. But I think one thing that Zoe's really going to have to watch out for at this event is 
those transition features. We saw her there last year performing that frontside 720 on it. She said that was new for her. So she's gonna have to adapt to that. Well, I know before she came out here, she went out to Calgary just to hit their transition features. They had built a shark fin and she went out there to practice. And again, Mitch Brown being her coach, a former half pipe Olympian as well, is definitely gonna help. Oh, so. yes. All right. Excited for this one. The first rider to drop here at the Burton US Open, Anna Gasser. <laughs> And Anna Gasser won this event in 2017. She took second place in 2018. 2019, she was out, she was injured. She actually joined us here on the set, uh, just talking with us and you could really tell that she wanted to be out there competing, dropping in for her first run of two. Coming in, switch on the down tube, back to regular. She's a regular footed rider, left foot forward. Anna Gasser, you wanna talk about you know, the progression She's been at the forefront. There's the alley 360. Back to regular. Coming into the second transition feature. Front side alley 360. Anna Gas is so fun to watch. Her air awareness is amazing, and that's why she's let it. She's done a triple cork. Oh, I, think, I believe the only female that's done a triple cork. And there's the cab double cork 900. Going pretty big, but again, there's that air awareness. Saw the landing, opened up, and put it down. And that's, that's the start. First run, first rider to go. That is nerve-wracking being the first person. Oh, wow. Well, what a way to kick things off. Anna Gasser uh, back competing here at the U.S. Open, and she nailed it on that first run, uh, landing everything. And what's interesting, though, that was somewhat conservative for her, especially on those transition features. You know, definitely a conservative run, knowing what Anna has in her bag of tricks. But when you throw in two transition features, it, you know, it's going to add a little bit of stress, especially for, for these ladies. But she put it down, and, and that's what you want. You know, put down a solid run. You're dropping first, and you know that you can build from that. That's what I like to see. And there's dropping in switch on the first rail. Perfect. All the way to the end. Hits the kink. And then we get into this, those transition features. Holding the grab, the judges are gonna really be sticklers on how long you hold those grabs because overall impression, you got to impress them from top to bottom, from the time you're in the air to the time you land. And she was stoked on that run. Yeah, she got some great scores. This is how the scoring works. They each get a score out of 10 for each of the features and then the flow score comes into play. They add those two up and starting out with a 70.9 for Anna Gasser on that first run. And you know, that's, for these events, that first run to start out in that 70.9, that's a great score. And that's really going to set the tone for the rest of the field. Well, I think Anna really is strong on that overall impression because she slides the rails all the way through. She holds her grabs, and then she still has the big tricks as well. All right, next up, Kokomo Morase, 15 years old. I mean, she was competing here. We saw her compete here when she was 13 years old. And since that time, she has backside double cork 1260s. I mean, she knows how to ride. You know, it, it is true. Age is just a number, both older and younger. It doesn't matter. They're so strong. Opting for the different rail line than we saw with Anna Gasser. Regular footed rider, so left foot forward, coming in regular. Right into the first transition feature. Backside alley 540. Now coming in switch. Switch backside 180. Getting it through. I like this course because the riders can just mix it up. Multiple rail options and then you're throwing those transition features and it's fun to see how the riders kind of ride differently on those transition features. There's a front side 720 to end. Kokomo. You got two riders to go. Two riders have went and two landed runs. I like it, I like it. I like this start. Two runs, two landed runs, and uh, two really strong riders out of the gate too. This is a US Open. Every <laughs> name on this list is like, you know, they arguably could be on the podium. They could arguably be on the podium. It's hard to separate them. Yeah, I, when I was looking at this list, I'm like, I really could not pick the top six. Uh, and starting out with someone like Anna Gasser and then Kokomo Morase, 15 years old again. Um, she's got some big tricks in score, but really adapted well to those transition features. Uh, finishing up her first run of two out here. Right now, we are just starting the women's semifinals. And there's the backside alley 540. Missing the grab, which the judges will notice, but it's an easy fix for her in run number two. And there's that switch backside 180. 
Getting a little bit of a poke there too. And that's a great score, a seven for that. It's gonna be interesting because it's hard for the riders to ride these new courses, but it's hard for the judges to score them because how do you separate? How, what's a hard trick? What's an easy trick? You know, it's learning for everybody right now and it just keeps getting better. We'll take a look at those scores for her. Feature five was her weakest link, that 3.9. Uh, so Coco Morassi starting out a 56.2 for that first run. Again, all Kokomo would really do, I feel like, in that run is just get that grab on the backside alley -oop five, and that score will be even bigger. All right, next up, Miyabi Onitsuka. She took third place here last year out of Japan, 21 years old, and she knows how to hit big jumps to see this run. I haven't seen much of practice, so just, this is a lot of the first time I've seen these riders. And just clipping the side taco, that does not feel good. Right out of the gate. So Miyabi Onitsuka on her first run. She's gonna finish it up though, Louie. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, you know this is gonna be a throwaway run, but it's an extra practice run for you too, so. Getting another run through those transition features, kind of making sure if the, if the speed's changed, if anything's changed, you know, you, you're staying loose. So although this is a throwaway run, Miyabi's still getting a nice practice run in. Well, and keep in mind, too, that each feature is based out of 10. So just because she fell on that first one does not mean that she can't score high on all of the other features. Yes, that first uh, feature, that first score is going to be low. And yes, it's going to affect her overall impression score. Uh, but she did continue on her, with her run, and she'll get a score. You know, the most impressive thing is, is that slam was a pretty gnarly slam on a rail when you side taco, just really crunching your ribs. And you can see that she's in a little bit of pain. But she continued the run and still did a really good run. All right, well, let's take a look. What happened here? Right here, just clipping oh. it. She got the turn. She didn't get her board up and over the rail and clipped it. But again, like you made a good point, you still can get scores on each jump. And you never know what's going to happen with the rest of the field. You can only control your own riding. So you know what? She's like, I'm going to put down a cab 900 on the last jump. Well, and got a score of a 7.9 on that. So she has the potential. The potential is there. It's just that first feature. So unfortunately, not going to be what she's looking for. Like you said, it, the fall definitely hurts the overall impression. So she'll go up and look for run number two. So we head back up to the top for another Japanese rider, another young Japanese rider, Leila Iwabuchi, 18 years old. And she started out this season really strong, big, uh, winning a couple Big Air World Cups. Louis, I remember we were uh, covering the event in New Zealand in August, and she came out and won that Big Air event. Layla's another one that has big jump tricks. And I remember when she was the young one, <laughs> and now she's not the young one at 18 years old. Layla, a regular footed rider. She's just so smooth. I love her style. Just really cruising. Coming in, switch to the first transition feature. Switch front side out, 540. Back to regular. And there's the front side alley 360. You know, it's going to be interesting to see each rider ride in the transition features because amplitude will play a part in how the judges are scoring those because you can really send it on those. And then ending with the backside 720. Another solid run. So a solid run for Leila Iwabuchi, the first run of two. Again, we're just starting out the women's semifinals in slope style. Uh, the top six will move on to the finals, which will take place on Friday. And uh, it's a pressure cooker out there because we have some big names. Jamie Anderson will be coming up. But right now, Leila Iwabuchi with her first run of two. There's a front side 180, switch 50-50, cab one out. Perfect. And that's just the traditional down rail. That's a hard trick to do on that down rail. There's that backside 720. Getting the grab, spotting the landing just over the knuckle. A good, solid first run. And that's the key, you wanna put one down. You wanna build that confidence and then build in the run number two, especially in semifinals, especially with it being, you know, fast and a new course, just really feeling it out and building. So a 50.9 for her and she 
bumps into third place for the moment. Uh, just a beautiful day here in Bell, Colorado for the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. Take a look at this course and we get back to the top for any Ruka Yarvi. 29 years old, two Olympic medals. Uh, she's been in this game next to Jamie Anderson. I say she's been in this game the longest. And a veteran here at the US Open. You know, she's one of those women that are so strong in competition. There's a front blunt, same way 270 out. Regular footed rider, gap front board. I love it, just right into the transition feature, really separating. Nice solid grab on the backside alley 360. Into the front side alley 360. You know, any somebody that is so consistent as well. We talk about Jamie's consistency, but Eddie's another one that's so consistent and understands high pressure competitions. And there's that cab 720 to end. Uh, that was a great landing too. Yeah, she's that kind of quiet powerhouse. She's like, oh, I'll, I'll just let the riding do the talking for me. And you can see it there as she finished up that run with that cab 720. Uh, just a beautiful jump there at the bottom. And I mean, for any two, again, consistency, smooth, stylish. She knows what she needs to do. It, You know, it is a little bit of a game on how you kind of strategize what you're going to do on each feature, how you're going to do it on run number one, semifinals. And, you know, any just puts it down a solid run right here. And you know, we're what's interesting too, Louis, is we're just in the very beginning of, of this competition and the judges, because some of these features are new, the judges even need to warm up. Exactly, and that's what made it so difficult to drop first. And Anna Gasser dropping first and sitting in first place, is, that's a testament to her run, putting down a solid one on the first one because the judges are also, you know, they get some practice judges, they kind of have a very good idea what riders are gonna do, but still, you never know on what the range is going to be. Yeah, there's some question marks definitely uh, from the judges. Okay, well, what are they going to do on this? And Anna Gasser holding it down. So any jumps into second place with that run? Uh, look at the top right there, the tent. Athletes staying warm out there. It's a chilly morning and it's supposed to warm up. Next up, Zoe sadowski sanat the defending champion. She won this event last year at the age of 17. She is back. And an Olympic Big Air medalist. So you, you have to play that. Even though Big Air is different than Soap Style, they still have that last jump, is which is the lasting impression the judges see. And that's a strong suit for Zoe. So coming in switch right here, switch board slide through the kink. Coming to the flat two, King front side 360 out, solid rail section right there. Probably the best one we've seen so far. Backside alley 540 coming in switch right here. We talked earlier about her switch backside, which is so strong. Switch backside 540 into the cannon box. Backflip Wildcat out. Completely different line than we've seen from anyone. And then ending with the front side 720. And Zoe puts Woo! it down. Solid rails, solid jumps. If I, I mean, I hate to always put myself out there, but that was a really good run right there. Oh, yeah. And what impressed me, too, was her rails, what she did on the rails with that. She did not hold anything back. With the Wildcat off the cannon box, I think the, the rails right there is, is going to be a big separator from what we've seen so far is just how solid she was on the rails. So Zoe uh, came into this event last year. She was the reigning world champion. She had just won that world championship. She came in with a lot of momentum. Hasn't had necessarily the results she's wanted so far this year. But with that run, it looks like she, uh, you know, 50, she's 50, motivated. 50-50 front side 360, the back side 540 to the switch alley backside 540. That's what I like to see right there, you know. Oh, I have switch back nine, I have alley switch backside tricks. There's no jump, I can still do it on a transition feature. And then ending with the front side 720. Good speed, good landing, spotted it. That was a great first run for Zoe. Well, and she could even take that switch backside five and make it a nine. Look at that score, 43.1, add it to the flow score and goes into the lead, 75.1. And the defending champion is now in that first place spot here at semifinals.
You know, we said she might not have had the results she wants this year, but this is the Burton US Open. She's the defending champ. It's a last big contest too. She's gonna come out swinging. Yeah, well next up, Brooke Voigt out of Canada. And Brooke's had a really busy year this year. She's been uh, traveling, doing a lot of the World Cup competitions, finished third at the World Cup earlier in Sizeralm, Italy. Goofy-footed rider. This is our first goofy-footed rider we've had so far. So right foot forward. Coming into the first down rail. 50-50, front side 360 out. Perfect way to start. 50-50 through the flat down to 180 out. Coming in switch. Switch backside 180. Coming into the second transition feature. Backside 360. That rail section was very strong up top. Getting the turn to board slide on the cannon rail and then the last jump at the bottom. Front side 720. There we go. Oh, so, a lot yeah. of land, a lot of landed runs so far. I love it. I love seeing all these landed runs. I was, I really, my favorite part of that run was that first rail. Yeah, and you know, I said it. Brooke's been really busy this year on those World Cups, traveling internationally, uh, really, you know, looking to make these finals here at the U.S. Open. But you said it, Louie. This top section, right here, the traditional down row with the light kink. 50-50 front side 360 out, and that's why you get a 7.1 out of 10. That was a solid way to start a run. There's the switch backside 180, and then of course the last jump, front side 720. Taking it pretty deep, spotting the landing and riding a solid. That's a solid first run. So scores coming in for Brooke Voigt. 31.6 on the tricks, yep. Adds it to the overall impression for a 51, and that slots her right above Leila Iwabuchi into that fifth place position. I love it. I love the Burton U.S. Open because every semifinal run is so strong. And pressure filled. All right, so this is a new rider, Evi Pape who just won the gold medal at the Youth Olympic Games in slope style. She's another 15-year-old that's come out here, now competing in the semifinals here at the U.S. Open. I'm excited to see what she has for us. 50-50 front board on the flat gap down. 50-50 front board on the front front board on the on the flat down rail. Coming in the first transition feature. Backside 360. Opting for the smaller part of the transition on both of those. A little melon grab. To the cannon box. 50-50 mute grab. And then the last jump. Front side 180. I'm going to tell you what. Front side 180s on big jumps are a scary, scary trick. You know, she was going off of that mat front side 180. I'm like, that's... That's almost more difficult than a 360. I mean, th those are hard tricks because you have so much air time. So 15-year-old Evie Pape in her very first U.S. Open semifinal out here. Uh, take a look at the top. There's that 50-50 front side board right in the middle of the feet, sliding all the way through. And this is what's different. She's taking that line right there, which is different than we've seen from the other women, but still solid. Backside 360 mute. Right here, getting the little tweak, leg kick out. 15 years old. So scores coming in, trick score 23.7. And the first run score of a 39.3. Come from the Youth Olympics to pretty much the biggest contest in snowboarding. Yeah, you know, for her to even just be on this stage competing, that's a really, really big deal. Uh, Want to welcome a guest, mm -hmm. Julia Marino. Welcome to the set. Thank you guys for How having me. How are you me? doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good. Uh, so you practiced? Yes. Okay. Walk Pract us through. <laughs> yeah. So um, I broke I broke my wrist at X Games and just trying to get back from then. Um, I got surgery on it and just not really feeling too ready yet for this course. It was just a little much for me. So. Um, yeah, so I'm just taking it chill a little bit longer and 
gonna go uh, just kind of ride and try to you know work on my stuff instead and then just kind of be ready for whatever comes at the end of the season and just be ready for next season as well let the body heal yeah exactly and uh, <laughs> uh, you know I want to say congratulations to to your big win at the locks open Thank earlier you. this year that was Thanks. that was fantastic yeah that was a fun contest I, I had a good time there it was like sunny every day it was warm it was good vibes <laughs> yeah it was a good contest yeah I love it you know you've ridden the course Give us a little bit of an insight from a rider's point of view of this new setup with transition features all over it. Yeah, I think um, like the new setup is definitely, it's a little bit different from what everyone's used to because uh, you know they threw in those transition features which are starting to be new, but these aren't even shaped like the same way as most transition. They're like kind of sideways a little bit. So yeah, just adding a little flair to the course, but um, I don't know, I've seen people handling them super well and um, Personally, I think I need to work a little bit more on <laughs> transition features. I could definitely use some work on that, but I don't know. Everyone seems to be figuring it out uh, pretty well and, and, you know, dialing in their runs. So. Do you think slope style is sort of heading that direction? Um, also, because big air, we have big air, right? We've mm -hmm. got that one big jump to focus on. And so we do have a big jump here, but sort of throwing in kind of those different features to really test your... Yeah, it's different for sure. I mean, everyone has to kind of transition from, you know, regular slope course, which is generally three jumps, into now having not just one transition feature, but two. Because, you know, every contest now, I would say this year, has at least one transition feature in it. So having two that you have to hit each side, you can't choose your side, like you have to hit the left side and then the right side. It's definitely a lot more challenging for everyone. But, I mean, it's just part of the game. Like, it's snowboarding is evolving. The tricks are evolving. So the course makes sense that the course would evolve into something else, too. So, yeah. Um, you're going to hang out with us, right, and help us call some of these runs? Yeah, yeah, for awesome. sure. I'm awesome. excited to watch All right. This. <laughs> uh, we're going to move on to, let's see, it's Summer Gendron, who is up next from Canada. Uh, and she's also been kind of busy doing some of the World Cups. Um, you know, we've seen earlier Anna Gasser, she's sitting in that second place. She was the first rider to drop in. Right now, it's the defending champion, Zoe, who is sitting in that first place position. But 18-year-old Summer Gendron up next. A goofy-footed rider, right foot forward at the age of 18 years old. I think I'm a, let's have Julia walk us through this run. This is this is your forte right here. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I've seen Summer riding. She's she's been killing it. So let's see what she has to put down. Dropping in switch with a nice oh board, board to the king. Back to regular 50-50 the board to switch. Ooh, getting a little scrape. Could still hit the. There we go. Back one. Oh, switch, that was switch back side. Oh, shoot. Switch back one to, oh, Ooh. whoa. Going for a back five or was it a, maybe she was going back three and over rotate a little to back five. Oh, dang, hope she's okay. You know, those, with the cold temperatures, the hard packed snow, any little slam that just might like, oh, she just, yeah. like, it's firm right now. That is not just landing on this nice soft snow. like. That's cement right now. It's fast. Yeah. It'll tear you up. And it's also, you whack your knee, and that's bone to cement, yeah. more or less. Yeah. I've, I've fallen on this course a few times, and it's definitely uh, not the most comfortable feeling when you <laughs> fall. Like, look at just that chunder right there, how, like, that stuff hurts so bad if you fall on that. But, um, yeah, dang, I hope she's okay. I've seen a few falls and just hoping everyone's making it through this course all right. You know, I love the way she started out. And this is what's great also about this feature is if you don't have the speed, you can still hit it on the smaller part of the wall. You see the bigger part, it's almost an extension, true half pipe wall, and then you see the smaller part. So even if you bobble or you lose some speed, you still are able to hit a feature and you don't have to skip it because every single feature is scored. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And two, you know, if there is even just a little bit of wind as well, like you may still be able to hit some of those transition features rather than those uh, big jumps. Um, Julia, how much time did you guys get to practice on this course? Um, so actually we got, um, US Open always gives us a bunch of practice, but it was just the weather that kind of made it 
not not really, like we didn't get as much as we wanted usually we have 10 to 12 1 to 3 the first two days and um yeah which is plenty of time but like i said the weather wasn't really cooperating for us those two days we had wind and it was like in and out with the snow it was like snowing and then 10 minutes later it was sunny and then it was back to snowing and everyone was just like what is happening it was a little bit a little bit crazy but um yeah, I definitely think if everyone had a little bit more practice uh, in good conditions on this course, it would help because those transition features are difficult. I mean, if you don't ride transition a lot and it's n it's not like hitting a jump, you have to hit it at you know the same spot, and you know you don't want to hit it too low, you don't want to hit too high. Like you got to figure it out, and it's it's a totally different aspect of slope style snowboarding. So um, yeah, I'm sure that hitting those on not too much practice time is but you know everyone's figuring it out pretty nicely like at least putting down like you know solid 360s and stuff which for this course is, is really good like that's what I would have done as well so well good news we see summer down uh riding down the course yeah. um on her own power so that's good news always probably like got like the wind knocked out of her or something always like to see that all right, Haley Langland. Yes. <laughs> All right, One Julia. One of my besties. <laughs> exactly. Love watching her ride. Uh, so much style. You know what? And Haley, 19 years old, she's got the style. Uh, she's due for a win. She's due for a podium result. She is, for sure. She's the style queen of women's snowboarding. And I've been watching her rail run. It's fire right there. Back lift. Like, so, so much style in that. Board 270, coming off a little early, but she, I saw her lock that trick in practice. Back three. Holding it, you know, had some good amplitude, yeah. just kind of tweaked a little shifty in the front side, Ooh, 360 front on three. the next one. Nice. Front one out and two. It's gonna probably be the cab set. Oh, cab, yeah! Woo! That's it. How, That's how late she does. was that? No, that was really sick. She boosted that and stomped it too. I know she was holding it like, mm. oh, maybe not the seven, and then just yeah. quick that little yeah. hip twirl. Yeah, that little bring it back that at the end. That, that stomped <laughs> last jump landing. I'm excited to see the replay on that one. She's like, she's dang, shaking my feet them out. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, is that a five? Nope, seven. Yeah. Look at this right here. This Back is my favorite lit. trick to watch Perfect. her do. Her style is so amazing. Yeah. I only wish. I only wish I could do something like that. And then the front lip 270 out, just getting it around. And then there it is. We going cab five? Nope, cab oh. seven. And watch the landing. Boom. <laughs> she <laughs> looks so see. deep oh on that. My, yeah. Going she big. There you go. But watch this air awareness. Stomps. And you can see the impact mm -hmm. of how high she Look at that, from. rides it out like a badass. Like, yep, just stomp that. I got that. <laughs> All right, scores coming in. Trick score, 34.8 for Haley Langland. Overall score, 57.6, and it puts her up into that third place spot. Great start. And now we're seeing the score, the separation, the riders jumping each other. This is when it gets exciting for me to watch and as a fan because you're like, ooh, I don't know, is it gonna, uh, uh, and then you're, everyone's fighting for a spot. All right, Annika Morgan up next out of Germany, 18 years old. She's competed in the finals last year. And when you talk about a rail game, uh, Annika has it. In fact, Anna Gasser sat in the booth with us last year and just raved about Annika's riding, especially on the rails. Another goofy footed rider. Right foot forward, front lip, slapping the nose on there. And then gap front board to switch. So coming in, switch to this first transition feature right here. Switch back one, switch nose. A little tip grab. Up tip. Two. Back, back three tail. Oh wow, hitting that bit, wow. Props to her for hitting that, that thing looks terrifying. First rider we've yeah. seen today even opt for that rail feature. There you feature. go, the back sev. 
she her back sevens oh. are so cool. They're so different. They're like do almost double in yeah. a way. The, the way last she goes off yeah. axis on that, yeah. The last flip is so yeah, so off axis, but really cool to see her hit that, you know, that other feature that other rail feature she's a her and anna are the only two girls i've seen hit that one and that thing looks really scary coming into it so um props to her for branching out and hitting the other side there's that gap to board slide <clears throat> coming in switch but that there's that rail feature yeah. that you talked about scary glad she that that's really nice board slide to reg and then this flat and then what? dip Ooh. That I never, still try to comprehend easy. how she does that. <laughs> well, it's like she's starting off flat, yeah. and, then and then she, she goes off it. axis. Yeah. Just enough so you see the knuckle, and you're like, okay, I'm just going to fall forward here, and it is insane. Jessica Jensen, an old, uh, on, the, on the U.S. team, she did her back sevens that way, too, and... Those are, they're, they're the only two girls I've ever seen I was gonna say sevens those, like that. Yeah. yeah, those are the only two riders yeah. I've seen that they're even so unique, yeah. Think about that when yeah. you're like, oh, oh, now I'll dip my shoulder. All right, so Annika Morgan, run one of two. Uh, scores coming in a 62.0 for her, and that bumps her into third place. Nice. So uh, that off axis 720. And the tall rail feature. And the tall that, rail that, feature. That definitely boosted her points for sure, because no one is hitting that. All right, so moving on, Jamie Anderson. Uh, what can you say about Jamie Anderson? She's won this event seven times. Jamie is just next level. She's consistent. She's so consistent and so like smooth and just watching her ride, she looks so calm and effortless and she just, she knows how these contests go. She's not a stranger to them. So it's always fun to watch her ride. Coming in switch. Oh, little tap there. Board slide. Gap to back lift. That was sick. Yeah, that was really real challenging. Nice. Yeah. Coming in switch back. Oh, I, sorry. Back five. Coming in switch to the second jump. Into back one. Oh, board to Sev out of the so box. Smooth. That was so smooth. So smooth, all her runs. It's so it's so nice to watch her ride because she just is like such a good example for everyone. She's up there, she's calm, she helps people. You know, I remember when I was starting out competing, she helped me, you know, calm down my nerves because I was all over the place with the pressure and everything. And yeah, you just see her ride, how much, how smooth she is on everything. She looks like she's just chilling. Everything is with authority. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no doubt in her mind mm -hmm. every feature she hits. Yeah. And this right here. This is yeah, so... Yeah, back lip. Yeah. Perfect. And oh, no, oh they're going to see. She hit the higher part of the wall and really sent on that first transition feature. And then the tail slide 270. So smooth. And she came out of that with a ton of speed, too. The way she landed on that. And then right here, doing what Jamie does. Yeah. And just effortless 720. And Julia, I love to hear that you said that she's the calming presence. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. she's been so dominant in the world of slope style. She's she's really cool. She's inspiring because you know she's been competing and doing well for so long. And you know she was on that, always on that top spot for for such a long time. But then as soon as everyone started progressing, she didn't just hold back. She was like, I'm gonna get up there with everyone else and send it. And she's still out there. It's like one of the best snowboarders in the world, killing it with everyone. It's so cool to see. So 66.4 for Jamie Anderson on that first run of two. And, um, I, you know, I sat down the other day, and I actually got a chance to watch some of her footage from Unconditional. Mm -hmm. uh, it just made me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> just, just like, oh, wait, I need to go back to Japan. I need to go start riding more powder. I look at the top. Um, what's it like when you guys are at the top waiting to go? Ooh, it's definitely a lot of, like, whoosh, jitters, you know. You got to... But um, there's a lot of adrenaline, too. Like, you're dropping in, and everything kind of just goes out, and it's your run, and that's all you're focusing on. And here we go with Lori Bluin. So Lori Bluin, my, yeah, out my of good homies. Out of Canada. I mean, she's had a pretty good year, too. Yeah, she's been killing it, honestly. I'm so happy for her, everything that she's accomplished. Nice board on the transfer. 
50-50 front one out of the donkey coming in switched for switch back five. Yes. Oh. oh. I was looking grab, so too. good. Yeah, that was like, she's got switch back five. Like that's one of the biggest things I give her props on is hitting first of all, hitting that feature switch back side. Like I I don't think I've ever even hit a transition feature switch. <laughs> I gotta get up there on that. <laughs> gotta come join us in the half pipe. Know, we'll but we'll help you out over there. It's really cool. Yeah, she. Oh wow, going to the front set there. Louis gonna start a training camp for um, how to ride transition features. Come over to the half pipe Bring and I will teach you. Yes. Honestly, it's so real because you can't just hit those pipes. Like, like it's you need to know how to hit transition features, and I definitely could use some more tips on that. <laughs> All right, so Lori blew in first run of two. She's got another chance. She's got one more run. Yeah. Uh, she's actually rounding out the first run of two for the women's semifinals. I love the kit. I love the all yeah. pink kit. It looks so good. It's, yeah, she's been like coming out with all these super bright, colorful kits that just pop. And it just, I feel like it fits so well with her personality because she's just out there to to riff and she's always on fire and she's always stoked and so motivated and she wants it so hard so yeah definitely not next run but not the run that you know yeah. we're used to seeing from Lori Bluen mm -hmm. but her season so far has just been on fire with all I mean at X Games that big air that was that whole final was just next level. All right, well, here's what the leaderboard looks like. After run one, it's the defending champion, Zoe sadowski Sanat in the lead. Anna Gasser in second place, followed by Jamie Anderson in third, Annika Morgan in fourth, and Haley Langland in fifth. And then rounding out that top 13 is Lori Bluen. Uh, stick around for more action. We are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Three locations, three disciplines, and some of the best snowboarders. To have an experience like this together is like magical. Like I'm the luckiest person in the world, really. Mark and Craig explore the evolution of snowboarding in this series with Eero Etala, Travis Rice, and a bunch of young guns. Brothers McMorris, now available on Red Bull TV. No doubt that these four girls are the future of female free skiing. Watch them shake up the scene. This girl is beyond talented. Four, now available on Red Bull TV. Zion Wright, Jamie Foy, and Alex Midler hit the road to find some of the best skate spots in the world. <laughs> what looks easy can sometimes be hard. They ended up with an outstanding skateboard movie. You good? Now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to the Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships here in Vell, Colorado. We have just finished up run one of two in the women's semifinals of slope style. Uh, Mother Nature is shining upon us. A beautiful day out here. A beautiful course, a different course. Uh, we are joined. I'm joined by Louis Vito, Olympian Louis Vito. And then also we've got Julia Marino in the course who actually got a chance to ride. Um, Julia, first impressions of this course. First impressions, I was like, oh, two transitions going that way. Um, I mean, it's always a surprise coming into US Open. Uh, they always do something special, something different. And so, yeah, my first impression was uh, I need to get on to quarter or side hits more. <laughs> that was my first thought when I got up there. But I really, really liked the rail section this time. And um, 
because it's kind of like street style, but it's not too crazy. Like everyone is able to get on the rails clean. And, and I also really like the last jump. Um, I actually didn't hit it, but I heard amazing things about it because in the past it was way more like quick going up. And now this year it just looks like they really got it dialed in and made it super smooth. And I think having that last jump be smooth, you know, you do your whole run and then you can hit that at the end. I think that's super key because in the past that jump has been pretty <laughs> pretty big pretty scary but this year it looks really good so yeah and i like the fact that uh this course offers a lot of variety we can see a lot of variety from all the different riders it's not just jump 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 exactly. uh we've got rail rail transition yeah. rail then a jump <laughs> i know i think i think us open is definitely unique in being one of the only competitions to mix the rails and the jumps they're not it's not just like all rails then all jumps or all jumps and all rails it's like rail rail transition transition rail jump it's so it's a different you know it's different the way they lay out their course and i think that adds for more creativity well let's hear from the riders we got a chance to talk to them earlier uh, to see what they thought about this course It looks like a snake run. You can see both the first hits from here, both the first rails, which is like, you never get to kind of see that. It's probably the most complex, but the most simple at the same time. Coming into these rails, you're gonna have tons of speed. Then you're gonna be able to go huge and do tricks that you don't often see on rails. It's gonna be insane. It would be sick on that big flat rail to go like front 450 because it's like big and burly. Now we're supposed to keep the flips to the jump. Oh. We're supposed to in snowboarding. That's true. I think it's cool that the first time we have like two mandatory quarter pads both directions. So we all got to show some transition skills. There's usually just jump, jump, jump at pretty much every soap style contest in the world. So to have a break in those airs and hit a rail and then switch your stance up potentially before the last jump is neat. I haven't heard a single complaint. I think everyone's pretty stoked to get on top of it. All right, there you go. And we have men's semifinals coming up after this. Uh, Louis, what's your take on that? That was really cool to get, get that behind the scenes and like, the riders weren't even talking to camera. You know, they're talking to their coaches, their friends, and they're just standing there like, wow, like you were in their head and knowing like their true thoughts. And to really see the riders kind of how they break it down from the time Darcy showed up and like, well, I can see this feature and this feature. And then you hear Judd talking about different ideas. You just see the ideas flowing. And from like when the first time they showed up, they get a couple runs. It's just cool to kind of be in the rider's head. Yeah. Do, do, do. How yeah. am I going to do yeah. this? Um, all right, we're going to get back up to the top for run two of the women's semifinals of slope style here. Uh, 13 competitors. We started out with 16. We had a couple injuries that dropped. Uh, Celia Norndahl was not able to compete, uh, wishing her the best. And also, Maca Valle uh, was injured in, in practice, so we wish her the best as well. But we're going to get back to the top for the second run. And Anna Gasser currently sitting in that second position, a 70.9. She's the one that kicked things off, uh, really set the tone for this event. And still sitting in second place, so that score has hold. Coming in, switch right here to the first rail. Switch front lift through the kink. Gap front board. Anna, you just, I feel like I can see the confidence building in. There's the big crippler. Little hand touch, but still riding through. Already so much more improvement from an already strong first run. Coming in, going for the high rail. Julia talked about Anna being one of the only girls she's seen to hit that and then switch into the final jump. And then with the cap, double cork, 900. Ooh. For, I mean, you start first run and have a score that's holding you in second. And we talked like, you know she just wanted to put one down. And then you can see already, still upping it a little bit more. The confidence I felt in her riding, there was just speed and a little bit more power than run one. And we saw it. That run was amazing with the Crippler, the first Crippler we've seen off the transition features. Yeah, and this was just semifinals. Wait until we get to the finals. Uh, I love this this gap to front board here. That's like 
that rail is pretty challenging, not gonna lie. I've hit it a few times, and this Crippler too, I love I love watching Cripplers, one of my favorite tricks, because it's so cool how you just think it's gonna go one way and you just bring it back, and it's sick to watch. All right, so Anna Gasser coming in with her second run of two, currently sitting in second place. Those trick scores, it's a pretty good trick score, the flow score, and a 71.3. So she ups her score, still stays in that second spot, but still an improvement, um, adding that crippler. And you know what? It's semifinals. Mm -hmm. In the finals, she gets three runs. Yeah. So, And we're taking top six to finals, so second place. You know, she doesn't necessarily have to win today. She just wants to be in that top six. Absolutely. All right, Kokomo Morase, she's sitting outside of that top six right now with that 56.2, so she's got to do something here. Kokomo, 15 years old, coming from Japan, regular-footed rider. Starting off with the 50-50 gap board slide. Another 50-50. Front side board slide, and now the transition features. Wow. Ooh, that with the so pose good. on that backside 540. Coming in switch right here. Switch backside 180. That poke she had on that on that first transition feature was great. 50-50, little indie crail tweak. And then the last jump. Ooh. There's the double. Oh, of course, 900. Just a little bit off on the speed and catching that toe edge oh on the God. knuckle. You know, the thing is, is sometimes you just don't know that that's coming, so boom. I've seen the young Japanese riders taking some of the heaviest slams and just getting right back up like it was nothing. Like, I would definitely be in pain after those, like, they're just they're just young and made of rubber, I guess. I mean, this this uh, back five right here with the poke is one of the Boom. nicest oh. things I've seen on the transition from all the ladies. That was all proper. Week. Yeah. Coming a little short. Oh my god. And like you said, just it's just gets pops back right, up. Pops I right back I up. I mean, truly amazing. So Kokomo Morase coming in. I mean, going for it. Uh, like with a she bloody was nose. going for it at the bottom. Look at her just taking it like a champ oh. with her. I just I love for her score. Her big jumps too. Yeah. I know. So she is not gonna make the finals here at the U.S. Open. But you know what? That poke on that spin mm. earlier. I mean, that she had great. some good style and she was going for it. You got to give her props for going for it. All right. Miyabi Onitsuka in 11th now. So she has some work to do to get up into that top six. You know, she just had trouble on that first rail, and slow style is one of those you really build off of each feature. And, you know, even a little bobble, you got to have be mentally strong. And she took a slam, a hard taco to the ribs right on this first one. Let's see if she can do it this time. And there it is. Nice. A little front or a little board slide there. 50-50 gap, oh. force like 270 oh. out. Wow, that was mm -hmm. sick. There's the backside 360. A little shifty to keep her rotation. And then the front side oh. alley 720. Oh. Yabi is coming together into the cannon box. 50-50 front side 180, and then switch. With the cab 900 wow. in a far landing. Miyabi's such a good rider, and she's just like been killing it with all her tricks. She's dialing them all in, you know? It's so sick to watch her. Yeah, I really wanted to see her link it from top to bottom. Um, you know, just that unusual fall at the top. And I know I talked to her earlier. She said after X Games, she's just been spending time in Colorado and working on her yeah. rails. And you can see it's like, I mean, that was, she came in really hot to that rail too. So she had to get that around super quick. Interesting playback on the the end there. Oh, <laughs> here we go with the cab nine, super smooth. And she stomped that too, no hands down. Oh, that super was easy. Big. I like it, just, you know, big. Took I love her halfway suit down too. Her stomped. suit looks awesome. All right, so Miyabi was sitting in 11th position before that run. Definitely going to be an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she going to go? 65.7. And that puts her into fourth place for the moment. 
putting Oof. Haley Langland on Haley the bubble. Haley Langland, now. yes. You know, that, I keep saying a taco, so she landed sideways on her ribs on that rail. You could see she was in pain on the bottom, but one thing that makes that pain go away is landing a run like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And now she just has to sit at the bottom and hope that score holds up. All right, Layla Iwabuchi, a 50.9 on that first run. She's sitting in 10th. She could easily bump up into that top six. Layla's another rider that I just love her style. It's pretty effortlessly. Front one, that one out, on the down row. That is a difficult trick. 50-50, four side, going for the two. the pretzel Yeah, right the pretzel there. and just. That would have been super sick. Her rail riding has really impressed me, just the little bit that we've seen today. You know, I feel like all the women are just kind of trying to step up the rails. It's just right. a time, you know, we're all, me too, I'm trying to step up my rail game. Everyone is because. It's important, just as much as jumps, to be good at rails, and they're also super fun. You know, we were all talking, you know, T-Bird, Sal, Tina, and I, and we were saying how the progression in women's slope style has been mind-blowing. What you ladies have done just in a short time, it's been so great to watch, but the competitions have been insane because you all are all feeding off each other. The tricks, you see one contest, you see some tricks, and then the next contest, you're like, Okay, they yeah. must have learned that one in the last day. <laughs> it's so true. And, you know, I think it's it's really cool to see because we're all, like, good friends, which is what's nice. And I think that's what makes that progression so much, like, so much more apparent. Like, everyone's doing bigger stuff because they see their friends doing it, and they say, oh, I can do that too. And I think uh, the camaraderie among among all of us is really cool. So Layla Iwabuchi having problems on that pretzel. Oh, wanted to see her get in there. So a th score of 32.5 uh, won't do it. And she will keep that. T so 50.9, and she's sitting in that 10th spot. But you're right. You know, you guys feed off of each other. And Julia, you came out and started doing doubles. <laughs> then everyone sort of followed suit. Anna started doing doubles. Yeah. Layla's um, got her doubles. It's really just truly amazing to see where women's snowboarding has, or how, how, what has become in the past two years. It's, it's just going to keep going up. And one rider who's kept up with that is Eni Ruka Yarvi on course now for a second run. Eni coming in regular into this first rail. Front, front blunt, same way. That wow. was sick. Front blunt, same way, all the way through. Gap, board slide, a little lip slide action. Getting that back foot over the rail. Big backside alley 360. Hitting that so proper. And then the front side 360. You know, any just going both ways. Back alley front alley 50 50, back 180 on the cannon. Coming in, switching to the last jump. Dumping a little bit of speed. And there's that cap 720 stop. Really nice. A little bit cleaner than her first run, too, on that cap seven. You know, I gotta yeah, say, that even that first transition yeah. feature, though, she the amplitude she had on that, because that's one that you can really send up, and I think that's what stands out to me when I'm watching these transition features is the line they take and the amplitude they have. Yeah, and this, this front blend same way was so nice, so proper, and yeah, all the transition features were super smooth. Like, she got that grab on the back three, looked really, held it the whole time. That was super nice. And the cab sev, really proper, super clean, holding that grab. Just love it. You can really see her yeah. spotting the landing coming around and just puts it down nicely. Yeah, landing switch on that just rides away, no problem. Scores coming in for any Ruka Yarvi. Sitting in seventh right now, a 68.4, and that is going to bump her into third. third. That's awesome. Good. We have a contest. <laughs> yes, we, you know, we said at the top of the show, any of these riders can make a podium. So the semifinals is that now they're finding the rhythm and they're putting it down. It's going to be a fight to make that top six. We have 13 riders, but that six is so difficult to make. So still coming up, Zoe sadowski sanat Jamie Anderson, Haley Langland, uh, but in the gate right now is the defending champion, Zoe sadowski sanat and she is the current leader at this point. So what does she need to do here? You're in the lead, but you have some big names coming up. You know, for me, it's just 
try to put down, just clean some things up, maybe try a new trick. I, I don't know how many, what she wants to do in finals, but it's a really a good tester to you know you have no pressure right oh, there. And, no. you know, you, but you're afforded that. She put down such a solid run that I would be shocked if yeah. she were to get bumped. But you know, you can either try to clean up some things, maybe hold some grabs a little bit longer, or maybe add a trick that you want to do in finals because you have two tricks and you're like, okay, this is an opportunity yeah. to see how the judges score. Oh, sent that back. And Goes for her back. She's such a good rider. I love watching her ride. She's just like, she got switch back nine, back nine, two of the best tricks I've ever seen. So like corked and steezy and she's definitely, wow, the wild cat owl. I mean, she kills it. She definitely pushes everyone to their higher level. I love how she fell and she's just still sending the run and stomping everything. That's like so cool to see. And solid. And, mm -hmm. and that's what's great. She gave us a taste. Yeah. And we already know just from what we've seen from these riders today, like finals is going to be crazy. Yeah. I think you can count on every women's final from here on out being crazy because the level of riding has just reached something else. Well, so what went wrong right there? She was trying to definitely go for that two sev. Um, I guess I sh she just didn't get, I don't think she got on her, on uh, on her nose, was that? She was going no, to switch. switch. Switch, yes, yeah. just switch nose. She was a little bit on the side of the rail, but if you make that whole rail, that little kink definitely helps you pop out, so I think she just missed that. So Zoe now sitting on a score of a 75.1, uh, pretty much looking good. She's yeah. looking good to make that finals, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's the top score right now in the semifinals is that 75.1. Uh, Up next, Brooke Voigt in ninth place with a score of 51. So she's got to do something if she wants to make the finals. It's cool to see her riding too. She took a pretty heavy slam in practice, so glad to see she's out there. I've seen her in a lot of contests this year. Mm -hmm. She's been yeah. really busy. Brooke, goofy-footed rider, 50-50 front three, three out of the kink. And you were saying how the kink helps you pop out. You saw she got good, good air on that. 50-50 front side, 180 on the flat down. Coming in switch. Ooh. Oh, and unfortunately, was a little off axis and couldn't get her feet underneath her. Yeah, I think that's the trick that she actually struggled with and fell on in practice, a switch back five that she was attempting. So it's hard. It's like not easy out there, honestly. You know, it's you every every run I feel, yeah. every I mean every day, every run. You're starting to figure out the course a little bit more. Then you throw in the competition where you have that pressure and you're like, all right, I got to step up. Your yeah. adrenaline starts going. And that's what I feel like we've seen, even from one, run one to run two, the confidence in their riding, the power of their riding. You can see a difference. I mean, I know a lot of them are confident in run one, but you can really see the difference in run two. Yeah, and, and competition will make you do something different than in practice. You know, just the fact of you have two runs, you have to do it. I have this every time, you know, I used to approach competitions where I didn't practice that much and I would just kind of, because it was the adrenaline that the competition that made me do things, now I try to approach it differently, but the contest definitely does make you step your game up for sure. It really does. You see riders like Mark McMorris and you're like, oh, it's a contest. Yes, yeah. he's going to step things up. So Brooke Voigt, unfortunately, a 51.0 on that score, on that run, sitting in ninth place. You know, just got a little, little tossed on the on the transition. Couldn't quite get her feet back underneath her. But you know, with the more and more transition features we see, I'm I'm gonna tell you the progression we've seen on jumps from the ladies. You're gonna see on these transition features. It's just literally a matter of reps. Yeah, just I mean, timing is so important on those. All right, Evi Pape, 15 years old, sitting in 11th right now. Uh, just won that gold medal at the Youth Olympic Games in slope style. Um, she had, her top section was good. She was a little conservative on her bottom features. But like we said, look at the power already, the speed on those rail sections coming in the first transition feature. Backside alley 360, getting the grab on that. Coming into the second one, a little melon poker. I'm a big fan of the poking, so I like that. 50-50 melon or mute grab. And then the last jump. Front side. Oh, wow. Uh, 40. Late oh. pop. A little late pop. I like so that. The first up. run does the front side 180, which is 
terrifying. <laughs> That's what we <laughs> said. I really don't think I would ever do a front one on a jump of that no. size or caliber. I mean, and, you know, she didn't, she, her rails, and look at this, how she locks this in. 50-50 gap to board, really smooth. And then she goes 50-50 to front. Oh, and then don't show that, but. You know, she's, she's only 15, so she's probably super new to transition features, you know? So, you know, just for her to be out here in US Open at that age, doing those things and like, you know, still landing her stuff, like big props. Well, yeah, and we said, you know, she has to do something bigger on the bottom jumps. Well, yeah. she did. Yeah, she, she did. absolutely did. And it's not easy. That is a humongous jump. That is <laughs> a large jump for sure. We went from the Youth Olympics <laughs> to now the biggest stage in yeah. snowboarding. Yeah, and she's she's making her presence known. So every puppy comes in, eleventh place for the moment. Uh, just I mean, overall though, a good introduction yeah. to who she is. Just being here for her is, pro is you know, getting getting to come to U.S. Open at a young age is just awesome. Even if you're not there to, you know, you're just there to enjoy the enjoy the ride, enjoy the the course and everything. As 15, that's that's a dream. She landed both runs too, yeah, and she, she stepped up it. both runs. No, and I have to. I mean, you said it. A frontside 180 on those jumps. I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's Never. that's scarier than spinning off of those. Uh, yeah, definitely. I would way rather do like any other spin. <laughs> any that. other one than a frontside 180. Yeah, not exactly. that one. But she is going to do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. We are winding down the women's semifinals in slope style. Run two. We are just finishing up. We have a couple big names still coming up. Haley Langland is sitting outside of the bubble. She has some work to do. Uh, Julia, you know Haley pretty well. Haley ha needs this U.S. Open. She needs to get, like, sh every year, you know, she she's almost there. And then sh she deserves it so much. And I love watching her ride. And she's, like, gotten so I didn't think it was possible to be more stylish, but she has gotten more stylish over the years. Um, adding in, like last year in US Open, she added in tricks where she did double grabs. I thought that was so cool to watch. And yeah, I just hope, I just really hope she kills it because she deserves to do well in US Open. <laughs> yeah, so Haley Leyland will be coming up next, or coming up shortly. In the meantime, we actually have Anna Gasser who is down there on the course. Um, Anna, can you hear us? Hey guys! Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Hey, hey. Uh, Anna! Uh, first of all, congratulations! The first rider to drop here at the U.S. Open in slope style. Um, what a run! Give us your take on your run. Um, well, we didn't get that much practice. I think we got four runs before the semifinal, and so I just tried to put a clean run down. Not my highest difficulty, but I hope I can change that if I make it to finals. All right, so we're watching your run right now. Um, I mean, really, you've set the tone for the U.S. Open, especially with some of these transition features and that rail section up top. Uh, well, I hope I can, like, I get more practice on the transition features. Those are pretty new for me. And yeah, I also hope to step up the rails, but dropping first is pretty nerve-wracking. So I was really nervous to drop in, and I'm, I'm happy I put it down. Yeah, Anna, you killed it. Thank you, Julia. We missed you out there. I know. I wish I could be out there with you guys. Uh, and then talk about that crippler because uh, we didn't expect that. Did you get a chance to practice that at all? Um, no, I didn't do that today, but I was like, my second run, I thought I had a chance to try some new things and maybe step up my run a little bit. It wasn't the cleanest, but I hope I get to do it more tomorrow and hopefully show some more stuff in finals. Oh, yeah. We are <laughs> so looking forward to it. Uh, thanks, Anna, for Thank hanging out with guys. us. Thank you, guys. Bye. Congrats. Bye. I love her. She's All right. So um, thank you, Julia, also <laughs> for joining us. Yeah. Um, I love it that she's like, I didn't do that crippler earlier, but I'm going to do yeah. it in my run. I didn't get to ride. I haven't, you know, the transition features are pretty new to me. But I'm gonna do a crippler cold turkey in my run just to try <laughs> she, it out. She's just so good. Like Anna, she's done so many tricks and she's laced so many tricks. So that doesn't even surprise me that she just didn't do it and then landed in 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 her run because she's a solid rider. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we are going to get back to the competition. A few more riders next to go. We're gonna head to the top for Summer Gendron, who is going to uh, be dropping in for her second run, and she needs. She needs this run. Glad to see her back out there. She seemed to like take a pretty heavy fall in her first run, but you know she's toughing it out, getting back up there. 
Yeah, we, we saw Summer take a fall in that first run. Um, really took some time to get up, but did right away on her own power, um, trying to put that crash out of her head and uh, get it together here for this second run. So currently sitting in 12th place, Summer Gendron out of Calgary, Canada. Dropping in, goofy-footed rider. Coming in, switch to the first rail. Switchboard slide through the kink. Back to her natural stance, right before 50-50, frontside 180 on the flat down. Switch, backside 180 on the first transition feature. Coming in the second. A little melon grab, poke. With a little melon grab. Just 18 years old in the cannon. 50-50 tail grab. And here comes the last jump. Backside 720. Woo! Almost putting it down. Just a little bit of the impact and compression, I feel like, causes it caused her to kind of wheelie out on that. You know what though, you gotta you gotta give her uh credit though she had that hard slam in that first run uh, picked herself back up for this second run and you know she if you think about it she didn't really hit those features since practice so to be able to come out and go that big you know I, I was impressed there's that switch backside 180 and then the big 720 mute grab opening up and just a little bit in the back seat that caused her to wheelie out so summer scores coming down. 24.1 for the trick score. So she will go into, she'll stay in 12th place. It was an improvement on that first run score. And you know what? To pick yourself up off of a slam like that, it says something about you. And get your head back together. Get yourself back in the zone. Forget about that last run and move on to the next run. But this is what we're waiting for right now, Tina. I know you're oh, excited for this one. Haley Langland, all right, sitting in that seventh place position. She is outside right now of that top six. A score of a 57.6. So 62.0, she needs to get higher than that if she wants to make the finals. Julia said, the style queen in slope style snowboarding. Back lip starts out so strong. Coming in, front lip, 270 out. And that was better. The way she just whips that around, though, and it was way cleaner. Backside alley, 360. You just notice every grab, there's some kind of poke and tweak on. Front side alley, 3, getting the tail grab there. Already an improvement so far from run number one. Oh, the backside 180, a little shifty. You don't even need to grab when you're poking it like that. And then here comes switch. Cab 720, deep oh, and just and stops it. Wow, Tina, we, we talked, I think just everything was better. The grabbing, the tweaking, that first, the 270 out of the rail, and then obviously the 720, we thought she was doing a cab five, and then she had a last minute whip it around. But that one, just right from the jump, you knew that she was gonna go seven and it was gonna be solid. So let's watch this replay right here because her run is always worth watching. Twice. Everything was cleaner, including this top. Boom. Whipped that around before she kind of skidded it around. And then here, getting the stale fish. Backside alley 360. And then right from the jump, grab once, grab twice. How do you like that for and some style? Watch the landing. Puts a little bit of a hand down, but that was so much better than that first run. Uh, oh, you could just hear her say right there that she's nervous. But you know, she did what she can do. Now it's up to the judges, and you have to remember, it's a subjective sport. You can only control your runs, and you can't control them, but they really did like that last feature. All right, take a look at that trick score. 39.3. She needs to get higher than a 62 to make that top six. 69.5. 69.5 puts her up into third, and Haley Langland will be going on to the finals. What, what, what pressure? What <laughs> pressure are you talking about? Because I just improved every single feature I hit. Even when you didn't think you could improve it, she did. And that double grab on the cab seven was beautiful. Oh, it was great. I mean, just so much style from top to bottom. And, and 
you know, she had a similar run, but it was just so much cleaner and all those little details, the fine little tweaks that she made. All right, up next, Annika Morgan is now sitting in seventh with a score of 62. So she just got bumped out of the top six. Haley Langland just bumped her out. So she needs to get a score higher than a 65.7 if she wants to make the finals. And Miyabi Onitsuka, she's now sitting in that bubble spot. Never a fun spot. Starting off with a front lip. Gapping all the way, board slide 270 out. Coming in switch now. Switch nose on the 180. Back to goofy foot. Backside alley 360. Pulling on that Indy too. And then opting for that high rail. Coming into the last jump. All comes down to this. Backside seven with the late dip. Ooh, this is the times I'm happy I'm not a judge and we're sitting here just enjoying and not having to you know, dissect the run because that was great. Oh man, if you are Miyabi Onitsuka sitting in that sixth bubble spot. Um, oh. All right, let's go through this again. This is what I like. This is probably my favorite part of her run. The gap board slide 270 out, just getting it around though. But still, like that's a lot of speed you have to have to make that gap and then hold on in 270 out and then pull on that indie grab. Backside alley-oop 360, ending with the late dip. It's just so automatic. Like Julie said, it's, it's hard to wrap your mind around. You start flat and then you dip at the end. All right. So Annika Morgan finishing up her run two out here at the women's slope style semifinals. Take a look at the judges. See some of them putting in their last minute scores. But they do such a great job on how fast they can deliberate, they can talk, because they all do talk amongst themselves and put the score in and keep the contest moving because what they're doing is difficult. To have to see all these runs and, and slot them and give them scores, it's not easy. All right, scores coming in for Annika. 37.5 for the trick score. And a 64.1. And it's not going to do it. She stays in that seventh spot. And Miyagi takes a sigh of relief on that one. I mean, breathes a sigh of relief. It's, it's hard. You're still. All right. Well, Jamie Anderson up next. And we're going to take a quick look back at her first run and some tricks that she did there. Good. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's, it's you fun to look back because this is only run two. This is only the semifinal. But we put down a run like Jamie did run one. All right, let's see. If there's anything, is there anything she can clean up? All right, here's. I guess maybe. Because it's really difficult to nitpick, but I'm going to nitpick, get a grab there. Okay. Maybe go a little bit bigger on that one. Yeah, but. I mean, it's hard to argue the result, but if I was, you know, a coach, a little stronger there um, in, in finals. She, yeah, there's, but, a, there's only one more rider left to go. So she's in the finals. But it's just where she's going to drop in the exactly. finals. We want to see that. So regular foot coming back lip right there. Gap, board slide 270 out. So much speed, you can see how much she traveled off the end of that rail. And there's the grab that we we're talking about. Going a little big in the compression, but you know what? I, I'm a big believer and just have grown, grown up with Jamie riding with her for so many years that if the contest was on the line, that's a stomp. But in your mind, you're, you are slightly relaxed and she got the grab and you know, she landed oh, a little deep, but if that was the finals, that would be a land from Jamie Anderson. Yeah, she wanted to improve, just get those fine details. Like you said, get that grab that can potentially jump up that score when it comes to the finals. Uh, Jamie Anderson has already locked her spot into those finals with her first run score. She's currently sitting in fifth position out of the top six. The top six move on to the finals. Um, so she's in. There's only one more rider left to go. You know, so that's what I'm saying is like, Jamie's a competitor. 
She's the most consistent. So see, going so big, getting the grab, but I'm telling you, with the pressure on, that's a land because she knows that she has to land it. In your head, subconsciously, you're like, you know, I'm in, okay, I got the grab. You're thinking about like the littler things rather than just like, stop, stop. So Jamie Anderson making it to finals, which is going to be great because any final that Jamie Anderson is in is going to raise the bar. Yeah, she's she's saving it for the finals. She's like, oh, oh, just wait. Just wait until it's uh, the pressure's on. Okay, Miyabi Onitsuka is in that sixth place bubble spot. There is one more rider left to go, and that is Lori Bluen. Lori Bluen fell on her first run. She did not have the run that she is capable of and that we could see from her. So talk about some pressure, because her score of a 17.9, uh, not what she wanted, obviously. Definitely not what she <laughs> wanted. But if you're Miyabi, it's also very nerve-wracking having Lori be the last person, and there's one person to go and one person to bump you out, and that's Lori Blue. And it's Lori Blue. And she's been riding so solid yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. Lori's coming into this event after winning a World Cup two weeks ago. Uh, finished up on top of the podium, has been on the podium in that second place spot next to Jamie Anderson earlier in the season. Board slide, gap board slide, 50-50, front side 180. Coming in, switch, back side 540. Whew, here we go. Back side alley 360, every jump, the obvious probably gets a little more nervous. 50-50 tail grab on the cannon. And then the last one. Front side 720 tail grab, and it's a land. Okay. That was a great run. Well, definitely better than the 17.9, <laughs> I'm was gonna say run. that. Oh yeah, I mean, huge improvement. Um, let's break it down and see. We're gonna take a look at some of these replays. We're gonna get those scores and see if it is going to be enough. Definitely a little bit of a conservative run for Lori. She just wanted to stay on her feet. It really was. I think that's what's, you know, kind of throwing me off because for Lori, this was conservative. Yes, especially on the rails, I felt. Um, coming in here, switch backside 540. Just missing the grab a little bit. But this, this is... Can't get much cleaner than that on the front side 720 tail grab. And now we wait. All right, scores coming in for Lori Bluen. 32.9 on that trick score. And final score 56.1. And that is not going to be enough. It puts her into ninth place. So Miyabi Onitsuka will finish in that sixth place spot and has made it into the finals, has dodged a lot of bullets. And uh, wow, I mean, those last few runs were definitely pressure filled. You know, it was great too to see how many of the riders that did fall run one come back and put one down and run two because it's a lot of pressure in, in riding a new course, but then having to land run number two and everybody's watching and then being Miyabi sitting there having to watch a lot of these great ladies go. I mean, that was semifinals. So there were some conservative runs in the beginning, but then you felt it just slowly build. You're watching these bigger tricks go down, more confidence go. And it's setting the stage for such an amazing final. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. And one person that will be in that finals is the defending champion, uh, Zoe sadowski Sanat. She is down there on course, and we are going to get a chance to catch up with her. Uh, Zoe, how's it going? Hey, um, pretty good. Just, <laughs> yeah, just finished uh, semis and qualified through, so I'm happy. Um, you sound a little calm about it, but this was a tough course. Um, how, how, I guess, relieved are you that you finally have made it through um, in, into that finals? Yeah, um, well, we had a pretty tricky practice the last two days, like real windy and cold and snowing. And um, yeah, we came out today and it was just amazing. So like it made riding the course a whole lot easier than it has been. And yeah, just to make it through the first round and land, feels really good, like the course is sick, especially the two quarters at the top, um, so yeah. You know, we're watching your run right now, and it was just so solid from top to bottom, right out the gate.
Did you have a certain game plan coming into today? Kinda. I There's definitely a lot more that I wanted to do, but to, just to make it through the finals, like keep things consistent throughout the run and, I don't know, just put it down. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I was thinking coming into today. You know, it's, it's we just watched your run and there's so many tricks that I can't even pick my favorite <laughs> feature you did. What is your favorite feature of the course? Uh, my favorite feature of the course? I don't know, it's either the two quarters, like the first or the second, or the first rail feature, because like it sets you up for the whole run, which I really like, and it's just like all round, just like they did such a good job with it, so. Nice. Uh, Zoe, we're super excited to see you in the finals uh, on Friday, so good luck with that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Congrats. All right, let's take a look um, at the overall results from the semifinals. Oh, oh, man. It's just Wednesday. My energy, though, is so <laughs> high from watching. I'm, like, feeding off of these. It's just Wednesday. All right, take a look. Here's the results from the Women's Slope Style semifinals. Zoe sadowski sanat with the top finish. Uh, Anna Gasser in second. Haley Langland comes through in that third place spot. Any Ruka Yarvi in fourth. Jamie Anderson and fifth. And Miyabi Onitsuka rounds it out in sixth place place. Uh, Louis, we are going to take a quick break, hopefully catch our breath after that slope style semifinals, and uh, we will be right back shortly. Dive into the world of Red Bull TV, your daily source for action sports, music, and entertainment. Download the Red Bull TV app for free and sign in to watch all of our content offline. Get the Red Bull TV app now. From underground activity to Olympic sport. It's hard to explain, you know, you don't get it from anything else. Maximum adrenaline filled with maximum, like, happiness and relief. Jump into the world of snowboarding. Terminology, tricks, and how it all began. See spectacular runs and meet the big names in history. The ABC of snowboarding, now available on Red Bull TV. Four women. Mathilde Grimaud, Kelly Sildarou, Tess Ledoux, Jenny Lee Bermanson. Shake up the world of free skiing. This girl is beyond talented. X Games, World Championships, you name it, they rock it. A thin line between friendship and competition. Four, now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back, everyone, to the Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships live from Bell, Colorado. I am Tina Dixon, joined by Olympian Louis Vito, a competitor. You've been on the podium here at the U.S. Open. Such a special event. And there was no better way to kick off this event than women's slope style semifinals. We just finished that up and uh, found out who the top six would be who are going to be in the finals on Friday and Louis. Uh, it was kind of a doozy. I mean, there were some big tricks and some really pressure-filled situations. I mean, there was definitely good runs that built throughout the day. I mean, even, you know, uh, Anna dropped first, and she had a run that kept her in second place. And that's so crazy to see. And that's how we started the competition is with a solid run from Anna Gasser. She set the bar and said, all right, this is the bar, step up, and a lot of the girls did. Yeah, and uh, semifinals is only two runs. The finals, they get three runs, and we saw someone like Anna Gasser throw new tricks like that Crippler on the transition feature without even practicing. So uh, that's just kind of an indication of what we could see in the finals. I mean, they're already doing new and bigger stuff. Not to mention, Zoe told us that, oh, there were some tricks that I wanted to do, and that was talking about her semifinal run. So we know that she has a lot more 
in the tank for finals. But what a great way to start the week off here at the Burton U.S. Open because that was a really intense contest and a lot of good runs went down that I can't even, I don't even know my favorite trick out of the whole day because there were so many. All right, we're going to take a look at some of the top scoring runs. Uh, we're going to start with any Ruka Yarvi. Top scoring tricks, actually. We're going to take a look at these tricks. So this is any Ruka Yarvi on feature three. Look what that. makes this so unique? Just the amplitude and the way she held her grab all the way around. She landed solid just right up and over because a lot of it is about you know, how that grab, how you do the style. And There's then, Zoe's, the backside alley-oop, 540 stale fish, and that set her up to go switch into the second feature. And this is Kokomo Morassi, backside 540. But just the amplitude is what separated her on that one, because she didn't quite get the grab, but she didn't flail, her arms weren't all around. They just stayed by her side, although I didn't grab, you know, I'm just gonna keep my style here and hold it and land solid and keep it moving. You know what I liked about those transition features? It actually gives the riders a chance to slow things down. We've been talking about this for a while in slope style, uh, but the, how, how you know we're just so used to seeing so many spins, but these transition features really give them a chance to slow it down, grab their boards, and really uh, show us their style. All right, we're gonna take a look at feature four and compare some of the tricks on that. There we go. A little 180 getting getting the grab and just still arm staying by the side and just flowing adding the style these features are great for these ladies to be able to show their style and here's and then yeah zoe coming in so zoe sadowski sanat that was not her best one no. right there but i'll tell you what hitting that one switch was pretty sick to watch because she's known for that switch riding well and, and then miyabi on itsuka yeah Look at that. She came in with authority on run number two, you know, after falling on the rails. She just attacked those features. And, you know, we didn't get to see it really strong, like in the full run flow. But her second run, as we saw right there, everything was just like solid. And I'm here for business. Watch my pop, my power. Yeah, and she absolutely showed it. She'll be in the finals. All right, so here at the US Open, we all like to get social. We want you to get social as well. Uh, so the hashtag is hashtag Burton US Open. And then you can also follow us at Burton Snowboarding and at Red Bull Snow. Uh, Lou, I know you like to get out there and get social. <laughs> oh yeah, you got to. You know, it's great too because people with whether you're watching or you're here at Vail or you're watching the competition live, tag. You know, yeah. hashtag see what everybody's doing because it's such a great vibe. And that is one thing. You know, we have the best riders in the world. We have the best parks in the world for this competition. But you know what? We have some of the best fans that come out for this competition. And that's what makes the Burton U.S. Open is the Burton U.S. Open is the fan engagement. Yeah, it's just so great to be part of this event. Uh, there's also the Cliff Best line. Uh, Louis, tell us about what this is. You know, the, my favorite thing about this is you see this this course that's built for the competitors, right? You see them, you get best of two runs, best of three runs. But the best line is through the park. You're just riding with your friends, what snowboarding's all about. You got your friend, hey, pull out your iPhone real quick, I'm gonna do this line. And then you submit your best line top to bottom, and then you have a chance to win. But it's it brings it back to you just riding the park with your friends. Yeah, absolutely, to get out there and um, just, yeah, really share, share your snowboarding and what you can do. You know what's funny is, I saw somebody come through and they came down and they're breathing all hard. I'm like, what's up? And they said, oh man, I've been trying to get this line all day. And I, you know what? I still haven't even gotten it yet. But they, they were focused on getting that best line through the upper park. And that's what's fun is like, it's a different competition, a no pressure one, but you still have the bar set like, oh man, I'm starting to feel it. Every time you're going to the course, you're riding through that. You just keep on having your friend. Hey, can you film one more for me? I'll film you next run. You film me this run. You know, and that's what I feel like the snowboarding community is about is just pulling out the phone or your camera and just filming your friends. Yeah, and that park is uh, super fun also. Um, we also have the men's semifinals slope style coming up next. So we're just getting started here with the women's semifinals. The men's are coming up later this afternoon. Uh, I am really looking forward to this one. Red Gerard, Brock Crouch, Mark McMorris. Uh, 
who is going to take it, but you've got to make the finals first. So coming up next, it's the men's slope style semifinals here at the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships in Bell, Colorado. And uh, uh, that's, that's gonna be a big one. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you didn't ask me this time, who do you think is gonna win semifinals? Because it's the who who of snowboarding for every event we have here. Um, my energy is high just watching the women's semifinal and the men are definitely gonna bring it because it's going to be cutthroat to make that final. Oh yeah, so don't forget to check in for the men's slope style semifinals that are later this afternoon. But for now, we are going to leave you with some highlights of the women's slope style semifinals. Thanks for joining us.